Hi, I'm Brian Hurt, and this is the Nata Watt and Haskell. So, about two weeks ago, my uh, Twitter feed exploded as everybody was going, oh, we found a Watt and Haskell, oh, this is such a big deal, and this causes me to rant, and therefore this presentation. So, what is a Watt? Um, the definition I'm using comes he, he never gives an exact definition, but there's this wonderful presentation. I posted this link to the meetup group. It's about 15 minutes long. I dare you to watch it as a programmer and not laugh. Um, so this is the Destroy All Software talk. Uh, it's not a Haskell talk. It's a, uh, a JavaScript and Ruby talk. Um, so the, the question is, you know, I, I want to give a definition, and here is my definition of what a WAT is. It is a language feature, WAT with respect to um, programming language, is a language feature that is both surprising and not the same as everything else in the programming language. And the second part, I think, is important, because without it, any language that does anything different, that's automatically a WAT. I mean, if I go, oh my god, in Lisp, less than is a prefix operator, not an infix operator. Um, anybody who knows Lisp goes, duh, everything in Lisp is a prefix operator. That's how the language works. That's not at all surprising. And if you're surprised by it, it's just you don't know Lisp. <laughs> so the WAT in question, everybody was going, oh my god, you take a length of a tuple. What do you think the res uh, just so quick, um, who, what do you think the, res the, the result of this is? Two? Wrong. <laughs> one? Correct. Take a length of a tuple, it returns the number one. You might go, what, not a what. This is what you should expect. So let's work through, this is not a what. This is based on everything else, how everything else works in Haskell. So let's work through the logic. So length, it just takes any container and counts the number of elements. So if we do a length of a list, you know, here is the list with three elements, it returns three, etc. cetera. Um, all it's doing is it's doing a fold on the container and counting the elements as it goes by. It's not doing anything at all clever, right? So can we have a container that instead of holding an arbitrary number of elements like list does, can it only hold at most one element? The answer is yes, we can. The maybe is, you know, maybe works as a container that holds zero or one element. Nothing is our no element response and just is we have one element. And we can do links on maybe just like we can do on list. And this works exactly like you would think it would work. Right? Now, you can, in Haskell, you can partially apply types that take multiple type variables. You can partially apply some type variables to get a type that takes the remaining type variables. Now, this works exactly like partially applying functions work. If you have a function that takes two arguments, you can apply one argument to it and get a function that takes one argument left. Well, in Haskell, if we have a type that takes two type arguments, we can partially apply one argument to it and get a type that takes one argument. So for instance, I can go either string, so either here is a type that takes two parameters, I apply, partially apply one string to it, and now I get a type that takes one parameter, and it acts exactly like the maybe, except here the left type is our response for, for none. So a left of foo has a length of zero, and a right has a length of one. That's a typo, that should be a one. Oh no, I can fold over it, so it works just like a, uh, works like a normal constructor. It's working just like maybe. Um, since it's foldable, we can do a length on it, and the length is exactly what you would expect. It has either zero arguments, zero items, or one item. This, by the way, if you're doing Haskell programming at all, you're doing this 
every single day. This is how Haskell does error returns, by the way, is, you know, as a standard, rather than throwing an exception or, you know, doing some error return value, you just return a, either a maybe or an either where the left is your error message and your right is your successful data value. So this is, this is bog standard Haskell, right? Tuples are not lists, at least in Haskell. I know a lot of other languages may fuzz the definitions here, but in Haskell, tuples are not lists. The tuple type, comma, is a type, just like either. It takes two type parameters, just like either. And it can be partially applied, just like either. So this is working exactly like what's all, what we've already seen. So if we apply the tuple type to one, argu one type argument, what do we get? We get a container that holds exactly one value. We no longer have the zero value option of nothing or left. We simply have the, you have to have one value in your container. And because we're partially applying to it, the left value, the left type value is the first value, the first type in the, in the tuple. The second value, second type is the second value in the tuple. So by partially applying to it, our container is holding the element in the second element of the tuple. And so now we notice tuples exactly as we would now expect it to work. We can fold over tuples, we can do F maps of tuples, we can do links of tuples because if it's foldable we can do length on it. So this is working exactly like a, a, a container of a, exactly one item. And note it's the second item that is the, that is the container. Here I can do a links. The fact that the first element is some other type, false in this case, just to make it a boolean, doesn't matter. The container is held in the second element, right? So last question. What did you expect? That it returns nil, not a number? This is a different language than that. That's my rant. Thank you very much for listening.